Hey, good afternoon, guys. It's Steve Cal 5 j Web. Hope everyone's doing okay out there this weekend. So I got some more cool stuff I want to show you on FL Digi. Uh, absolutely love this program. This thing has just been just all kinds of fun. So I wanted to show you some new tips uh, that I found, uh, just some cool little things that I thought were interesting. What I want to talk about first is um, there's a setting down here, and it's this little guy right here. So what this is is this is the mode, but you can also do some things with it, and I'll show you. What you can do is you can place your mouse into the box, and you can use your mouse wheel to change the mode. So if you want to go to uh, CW, to Contesta, and then it will take you through each one of the uh, uh, bandwidth settings for Contesta and so forth. So these are just some of the uh, some of the throughput settings you have for the various modes. It's the same thing you see up here. Same exact thing you see here where you have modes. It's the exact same thing, but the difference is down here you could just place your mouse wheel over it and hover over it. I'm going to change it back to CW. All right, now the next thing I want to show you is if you want to make some configuration changes, say for example you want to change your band spread. Uh, with right here. This is your band pass here that you're actually focusing in on. So say for example if you want to change it right now mine is set to I think 150 and I'll show you how to change that. So what you'll do is you'll place your mouse in this box again and you'll instead of left clicking you, you will right click. Now this will come up and this will give you the configuration for specifically for CW and you can see it right here it specifically says CW general. So if you change modes, for example, say you go to Contesta and, and, and right click, it will bring up, I'm sorry, you, you have to actually pick one of, the, one of the speeds first, like it says Contesta, but these are the different throughput. So say if we pick this one here and you right click, now it's going to bring up the specific settings for Contesta. So we'll go back to CW change it back here okay right click now say for example I'm going to change that bandwidth so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change it from 150 to 200 get a little bit more a little bit more listening room there and you can also place your mouse wheel over it and just use the you can increment it by steps of one or if you want to make a big change you can do that too see how the window is actually dynamically changing so we're going to set it back. We'll set it to 200 just for fun. All right. Okay. Now, next thing I want to show you is, say for example, if you want to make this uh, this waterfall taller, like say you want to make it taller, so you can see more more the 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 signal or a longer time period of the signal. What you would do then is you would act, you would go into your config setting. Got my notes here. You will go to config and you will go down to waterfall. And you will go down to FT, FFT processing. And it's set to 200. I think the default is 150. I'm going to change it back. I think it's 125. So you can, you can do uh, major steps here with the, with the minimum is 100. Uh, okay, the double arrows give you increments of 50, and then the smaller arrows give you increments of 5. So I'm going to change it back to 125. Now what's going to happen is, when I restart the program, click Save. Okay, so I've saved it. Now when I restart the program, the waterfall, th this here is 200 pixels on your screen. So when I reset the waterfall, what's going to happen is now you're going to see pixels. It'll be much, much shorter. So let's stop the, let's reset the software. Yes. Okay. And we'll relaunch it. FL rig first. FL digi second. All right, see how much shorter it is now? Now the, now the waterfall is a lot shorter. So you have a lot more space up here, but you have a, a shorter, smaller waterfall. So let's change it back just for fun. We'll go back to configure, dialog, waterfall, FFT. Let's change it to 200, 225 just for fun. All right, and again, we'll restart the software. 
All right, now we're going to go back to FL Digi uh, FL Rig first. Okay, now we're going to go to Digi. All right, now we got a much taller waterfall, a little bit less room up here. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, on the FT991A, there's a setting called BK-N. So if you press the FM list key and you right click over, you will see a setting called BK-IN. Now that normally is set to off and what that is, that's called the break-in basically. So what happens is, is if the break-in is turned off, you can practice Morse code all day long on your radio. You will hear the tone, you will hear the pitch and everything the way you have it set up on the radio, but you won't transmit. But say, for example, if you want to transmit, you would change the break in from off to on, and now your Morse code will be going across the air. So what I want to show you here is, say, for example, if you want to just practice with FL Digi and you just want to practice with the button sending code, but you don't want to transmit, you just want to practice. So what you can do is you can go in and toggle. Uh, there is a setting here, and I will show you it is under, the shortcut is under CW, go to configuration, config, and that's going to be modem, CW, DTR. Right now I have it set to none. Normally I would have this set to DTR, which means the software will key the radio. So I'll demonstrate. So when I transmit, now let me go back to 10 meter. I'm going to go to my list here and I could probably even go into a dummy load. I'm going to go to 2850. Okay. Now with this setting here set to DTR and all the other settings that I've got, FL Digi will key the 991A and it will transmit. And you will see what's going to happen is you're going to see you're going to see the SWR reading come up, and the SWR reading will be this reading right here. So when you see that, that means I'm transmitting. It's still going to show power in both modes, but when you see the SWR, that's the actual antenna. It's, it's getting uh, power. So let's transmit here. Okay, there's the SWR. It's picking it up. It's a little bit slow. The ALC is kicking in. Let me stop the transmit. So what's happening in that is that SWR is it's it's because it's pulsing back and forth. The update rate it's it's catching it every now and then. But when you see when you see when you see that SWR, that means that the signal is actually getting to the antenna. So we were transmitting there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to configure and I'm going to change this to none. But let me talk about something real quick. This uses a COM4, and if you remember from your radio configuration, it uses, uh, my, my configuration, it uses COM3. So what are those COM ports real quick? Let's just, let me just show you. If you set up your system, you're familiar with these. Silicone, or is it, yeah, silicone, Silicone Labs, basically, when you load the drivers for the 991A, you're going to get two COM ports. And, of course, the first one is the enhanced COM port, which is what you use typically at like a 38400 baud rate that will connect directly to the radio. The second toggle that they give you is a COM4, and this is called a standard COM port. And this is what is used to toggle the FT991A. And with the way this does this is when I have this set to DTR, that means that the FL Digi software will key the 991A radio, but if I change it to none and save it, now what's going to happen is I can practice all day long on FL Digi and I'm not going to transmit on the radio, and that's pretty cool. Now, it will still show power up here, but there will not be any SWR. So I think what it's doing is it's saying, hey, there's still power, but it, it, it's it's not going anywhere basically there's there's nothing being transmitted so let's try this here real quick again now I've got the setting off and I'm not going to be sending anything across the air it's 
See, there's power, but there's no SWR. And the radio is not keying at all. There's nothing happening on the radio. All right. So where I'm going with this is you can actually practice. Say, for example, if you want to practice using the system, you could actually just type in, for example, my name is Steve. And you could just simply press the uh, transmit key with the with the stop. You have to use one with the stop. So you can practice it. You can actually sit there and you can type in uh, code and record it. And you you know you can do things you know such as like my uh, my home is in Abilene, Texas. Uh, we have very hot weather uh, today, 100 degrees plus. And again, you would hit the transmit with, you always want to make sure you use this one because this one will end the uh, transmission process, that little greater sign with the line on it. So, all right, we're going to hit it again. I'm going to go ahead and stop the transmission here. Okay, TR. So that's that's one way that you can practice using the software, and you can go in and you can you can practice typing and recording and listening to different things. So uh, let me see if there's anything else cool that I want to show you real quick here. I really, I've been making notes on a lot of stuff here on this program. Uh, I've talked about some of the things here. Um, like I said, you can uh, have all my frequencies here. One of the things that I'll show you real quick if I have time is, say, for example, you have a frequency here and you want to store it real quick on this button down here. What you can do is you can hover over the store button and you will left click. And when you do that, it's going to store the frequency. So let's say, for example, I want to go to another frequency. Let's go to, say, uh, let's go to 70. And if I, if I, left click again over store okay now when i right click now i have two frequencies in here so let's say for example let's just go to another frequency i click store let's uh let's see here let's go back up to 20 meter all right now let's do this let's uh let's store frequency here now again i'm going to click store left click now when i right click all of those frequencies will be there. So I can, if I have things going on, I can, I can right click on the store button and I can move all over this place. I can go anywhere I want. See how I'm doing that? So if you've got CW action going on and you want to do quick saves real quick and you just want to temporarily save them, this is a good place to do it. To clear the buffer, what you would do is you would uh, press the shift key on your keyboard and click store. And now when I right click, all, everything's gone. So it's just like a buffer location. So anyway, I hope this is you enjoy this. Uh, this is just kind of some of the cool things I'm learning and uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks again for watching and uh, I'll keep putting up more videos. I really do love this program. 73 guys from KF5JUF.